Speaking Task 1 You will be asked a question about a familiar topic. You will then have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Many people think that students learn course materials more effectively by taking exams, while others think that students learn more effectively by doing other activities, like completing projects. Which one do you think is more effective? Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Well, I'd have to say that I feel students learn better by doing other activities than taking exams. For one, when I was a student, any time there was an exam coming up, I would cram. The day or two before test day, I would shove as much information into my short-term memory as possible, and then, after the exam, I would forget everything. Another reason for this opinion is that students learn in all sorts of ways, not just from taking tests. By doing other activities, like projects, students with alternative learning styles have a better chance of retaining the course materials. These are the reasons why I think students learn more effectively through other activities rather than exams. Speaking Task 2 you will read a short paragraph and then listen to a conversation between two people. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the conversation between two people. What do you think about this announcement? To be honest, I'm completely opposed to the plan. Really? Why? Because shutting down the fitness center isn't really going to save much money. I mean, sure, the building is really old, but even if it isn't used on a regular basis, the school still has to maintain it. They have to make sure it is safe and that it doesn't become a fire hazard or something like that. I didn't think about that. Right, and even tearing the building down will be expensive because of all the construction workers they'll have to hire. Plus, once it's gone, we're going to need to replace it with something new, so we shouldn't shut down the gym just to save money. You make a good point. And it's not like all the students can easily use the gyms in the city. The closest one is a 30-minute drive from school. How are people who live in dorms on campus supposed to reach them if they don't have their own car? You know, I took a taxi to one of the gyms and it cost nearly $20. I can't afford to pay them much money every time I want to exercise. Exactly. And even if you can afford to pay for a taxi, it will be really challenging to get one if you want to exercise late at night. I don't think that that was really considered when the decision to close the fitness center was made. The man expresses his opinion of the university's plan. State his opinion and the reasons he gives for holding that opinion. Prepare your response after the beep.
Start speaking after the beep. The man opposes this. To begin with, he points out that the university will still have to maintain the building even if the fitness center closes because it could become a dangerous fire hazard. On top of that, it will be very expensive to hire construction workers to tear down the building and replace it with something else. Moreover, he argues that all of the gyms in the city are quite far from the university, so it could be hard for students to reach them if they don't have their own vehicle. The closest one is more than 30 minutes away by car. Additionally, it can be quite hard to find a taxi from campus into the city late at night. So these are the arguments on why the man from listening opposes the university's decision. Speaking Task 3 You will read a short paragraph about an academic topic then listen to a lecture about it. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the lecture. So, whenever I think about this concept, I am immediately reminded of my grandfather's shoe factory back in my hometown. While my grandfather's company made quality, custom shoes, he struggled for most of his life to make it a success. However, when my father graduated from college, he went into the family business and joined my grandfather in the shoe factory. He noticed that other companies would often use scarcity marketing in their advertisements. For example, he would see expressions like limited time offer on these products. And one day, he decided to use a similar tactic to sell shoes from the factory. Apparently, my grandfather wasn't sure at first, but eventually my father wore him down and he took over the shoe company's marketing department. The first new ad my father released simply said, American made boots, limited stock available. In the years prior, my grandfather sold less than 500 pairs of these boots every year. But thanks to my father's scarcity marketing approach, that one simple line, limited stock available, led to sales of over 50,000 shoes that year. After that, my father and grandfather continued with this advertising plan and the company grew into an empire. That is the power of scarcity marketing. Explain how the example from the lecture illustrates the concept of scarcity marketing. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Scarcity marketing is the idea that some consumers buy things just because they want to be one of the only people to own it, and so in response, companies will advertise their products in a manner that makes them seem like they are rare. The lecturer delves deeper into scarcity marketing by providing an example from his personal life. He tells the story of his grandfather's shoe factory. 
When his father joined the family business, he wanted to use the scarcity marketing techniques he noticed were being used by other businesses. He was able to convince the grandfather to release an ad for boots that said there were only a few boots available. Because of this, the boot sales increased dramatically from just 500 pairs in a year to over 50,000. If I ever own a company, I will definitely use scarcity marketing to advertise my product. You will listen to a lecture about an academic topic. After, you will get a question about what you heard. You will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. Now listen to the lecture. Today we'll talk about the hippocampus's role in memory. The hippocampus is a part of the brain that is located in the medial temporal lobe and is responsible for a variety of functions, such as memory formation and consolidation. Memory encoding is the process of converting data so that it can be stored in memory. This procedure consists of several stages, including sensory processing, attention, and consolidation. The hippocampus is especially important during the consolidation stage when it converts short-term memories into long-term memories. This process entails the strengthening of neural connections between different parts of the brain, allowing for easier retrieval of information in the future. According to research, the hippocampus is involved in the encoding of memories that are spatially or temporally related. When navigating through a new environment, for example, the hippocampus is activated as spatial information is encoded. Similarly, the hippocampus is activated when learning a new sequence of events because temporal information is encoded. Memory retrieval is the process of gaining access to previously stored memories. The hippocampus plays a role in this process as well, though it is more complex than in memory encoding. According to one theory, the hippocampus functions as a relational database, allowing us to retrieve memories by connecting disparate pieces of information. Studies show that when we retrieve memories involving multiple pieces of information, such as a person's name, appearance, and occupation, the hippocampus is activated. According to the professor, in which brain processes is the hippocampus involved? Include points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. The lecture detailed the hippocampus's role in memory formation and retrieval. Located in the medial temporal lobe, the hippocampus consolidates memory, transforming short-term memories into long-term ones by strengthening neural connections within the brain. The professor highlighted that the hippocampus activates when encoding spatial or temporal-related memories, such as navigating new environments or learning new sequences of events. Moreover, the hippocampus also plays a critical role in retrieving existing memories. Acting as a relational database, it connects distinct pieces of information to form a complete memory. This function is evident when we remember compound details such as a person's name, appearance, and occupation.